Welcome back to an introduction to airport privatization. We will now begin discussing case studies on privatization of airports around the world to see what were the objectives of privatization and what were the results of privatization on airport performance. The roots of privatization in airport industry can be traced back to the 1980s Britain. Margaret Thatcher served as the Prime Minister of Britain from 1979 to 1990 and was a big supporter of privatization of industry. The ideology of Margaret Thatcher is commonly referred to as Thatcherism, and it is in Thatcherism that we find the beginnings of airport privatization. Margaret Thatcher's administration was of the view that government must not be involved in businesses and that state-owned entities must be privatized to remove the burden of financing and managing commercial enterprise from the government. With this ideology, British government carried out a massive privatization program across the country. Government sold nearly 16 billion British pounds worth of its stake and shares in state-owned organizations to private sector between 1979 to 1988. British Airways was privatized in the period of 1984-85 by selling 800 million pounds worth of government stake. During the same period, 400 million pounds worth of government stake in British airports was also sold. However, full privatization of airports was carried out in 1987. British airports were originally owned and operated by a state-owned enterprise, British Aviation Authority. In 1987, British government sold British Airport Authority and privatized seven major airports of Britain. These included Heathrow Airport, Gatwick Airport, Stansted Airport, Southampton Airport, Glasgow Airport, Edinburgh Airport, and Luton Airport. Later, more and more other airports were also privatized. The objective of privatization was simple. It was the economic ideology that government must not be directly involved in running businesses and making money because government is not good at it. In the pretext of privatization in Britain were a lot of loss-making state-owned companies seen as a burden on government and public money. It was expected that privatization of airports will improve airport profitability. So the big question is, did privatization achieve its objective? In this regard, we refer to a study on the effects of privatization on British airports. The study analyzes 20 British airports, including four state-owned airports, four airports with mixed ownership, that is public-private partnerships, and 12 100-person privatized airports. The airports were analyzed over a period spanning from 1986 to 2005. The measure of profitability was taken as change in earnings before tax, interest, depreciation, and amortization on a per-passenger basis. The study found that in 1986, four airports were unprofitable, but in 2005, only one airport was left unprofitable. On an average, state-owned airports were earning more per passengers. However, fully privatized airports showed far greater growth in earnings than state-owned airports. The study also revealed that the least performance was from mixed ownership airports that showed the least growth in profitability. So the objective of privatization of airports by the British government 
was achieved. Privatized airports were growing their earnings faster than state-owned airports. The example set by Britain inspired Europe to adopt privatization model, and in later years, privatization became more and more trending in Europe. With this, we conclude our discussion. See you in the next lecture.